Yes. Amen. All right, I'm going to talk about present truth today. And this is a term that's been um, kind of coined, you know, in the, in the last 20 or 30 years to do with the understanding of the kingdom and the apostolic and the fivefold. But actually, it's a term that's in the Bible. And most people don't know it's in the Bible. Because <laughs> people just talk about present truth, you know, to describe the, the, the revelation that, um, that we're coming into or walking in. But, you know, um, it's in Second Peter chapter 1. So if you have your Bible or your digital Bible or you know, your papyrus, perhaps, <laughs> your scroll, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> turn with me or pick up the, your Second Peter scroll. <laughs> All right, open it to the first run. <laughs> 2 Peter chapter 1 <clears throat> from verse 5 for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge to knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance to perseverance godliness to godliness uh, brotherly kindness to brotherly kindness love now this, out of this chapter this is all the, all the stuff I remember is those verses because I've heard it over and over again. This is what gets preached, isn't it? Yeah? So this is, this is what you've got to do, you know? You, you, you have to. <laughs> All right? Add goodness to your faith, and then add knowledge to your goodness, and, and add self-control to your knowledge, and add perseverance to your self-control, and add godliness to your perseverance, and add brotherly kindness to, to your godliness, and then add love to your brotherly kindness. All right? This is what you have to do. <laughs> but here's the thing, verse 8, which by the way I've obviously read before, but you know, how often do we you know, read stuff and we haven't read it? Yeah? Verse 8, for if these things are yours and abound. Oh, come on. Now here's the reason why he's given us that sequence of how to build upon things one upon the other in our lives. He says, if these things are yours and they abound. Oh, isn't that brilliant? So then if we abound in these things, then there's going to come some outcomes. So those things in themselves are not the, the focal point. They're the steps towards some things. How are we doing? Yeah? Those things are God giving a step-by-step -step process towards some things. If these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. Ah. <laughs> wow. Remember all those years when people would say, oh, you know, I, I, I'm not talented. I haven't got any gifts. You know, I can't do anything for God. You know, anyone remember people saying those things? Yeah. yeah. Well, guess what? Believers are never supposed to think like that. Isn't that an amazing thought? Yeah. We're never supposed to think like that because he's giving us a step-by-step -step way to build so that we can't be barren. We can't be unfruitful. Wow. Isn't that awesome? All right. Uh, in the knowledge of our King Jesus Christ, for he who lack, he, but he who lacks these things is short-sighted. Wow, what a contrast, eh? Isn't this amazing? All right. If you abound in these things, here's the outcomes, but if you lack in these things, you're short-sighted, even to blindness. And you can even forget that you were cleansed from your old sins. Wow. Do you know, there's a whole body of people in the church world that actually is kind of blinded to the realities of what life in the kingdom is like. All right? They're blinded because they haven't built in this step-by-step -step thing and so their lives are barren and unfruitful and they're blind. What a tragedy. But then he goes on in verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Are you getting the picture? <laughs> All right. He's saying here's the, here's the steps and here's the outcomes if you go this way. But if you don't, then this is what, where you're going to end up. But then he says, For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our King and Deliverer Jesus the Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in present truth. <laughs> so even though we know it, 
and we're established in it, guess what? Apostles are going to keep it coming. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what Peter's saying, right? I'm going to keep it coming, even though I know you know it and you're established in it. But I'm going to still tell you. <laughs> yes, I think it's right, as long as I'm in this tent, his body, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our King Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Wow. So Peter's not saying, guys, I've retired and, you know, thanks for the money you sent me last month and, uh, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, all right? This is a whole different mindset. Here's a guy who's actually at the end of his life and ministry and he's saying, I know you know the, this stuff, this present truth stuff, all right? And I know you're established in it, but I'm going to keep telling you. I'm going to keep telling you so that after I'm gone, it'll still be resounding in your head. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to keep telling people so that after I'm gone, they'll keep telling people. Yeah? So this, this kingdom you know, understanding and this kingdom thing God's bringing us into and the, the apostolic and, and all of that stuff, no matter how much we know, we've got to keep hearing it. Yeah. Because it's got to be generational. And yet I go some places and it's almost like people are starting to move on. It's like, oh, we've done that. And I'm like, actually, no, we haven't done that because it's eternal. <laughs> right? It's eternal. And what's more, it's ever increasing. You know, we're not winding anything back. We're not moving beyond it or away from it. You know, come on, this is the main game. Awesome, hey? And so we have to keep teaching present truth even in places where everybody knows it and are established in it, we must continue to teach it. Wow. Yep. So, if anyone in this room thinks that we're, at some point we're going to move away from this, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but under the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Peter said, All right, I'm going to keep teaching this stuff so that it continues to be taught after I'm deceased, so that the generations walk this way. So the generations beyond me have this revelation. Because present truth must be present in every generation. Yeah. Yes. Did you get that? Yeah. All right. It's not that just the truth for us now and we're going to move away from it or move beyond it. No, even though we know it and are established in it, it, it needs to be continually reinforced. We need to be getting fresh facets of revelation and we need to be speaking it so that beyond our time on this earth, it keeps being you know, propagated in the earth so that present truth is always present. Yeah. <laughs> Kingdom truth is always present in every generation. Wow. Isn't that fantastic? Yep. How are we doing? Good. I'm glad you're doing good. That's great. So present truth is what God is doing now, right? but which he wants to continue to do, but there'll be some differences generation by generation. So we're in a world now that's different from what it was 50 years ago. Yeah? It very much is. You know, I was around at my dad's place the other day, and of course he was born in 1927. I think that's when it was. 95 years old. He's seen a few things in that time. He's seen a few changes. And he said to me, well, he said, you know, I've just had to adapt to this last couple, two or three years. You know, see, you know, I'm nearing the end of my life and the world's changed again. <laughs> the world's changed, but, you know, present truth continues. But it's got to be fresh in every generation. Yeah. It's got to be revelation in every generation, which means it must continually be taught you know, with revelation, you know. It's got to be taught with a grace that causes light bulbs to go on, you know, so that we don't fall back into religiosity, so that we don't go back to living in the flesh or in the world's ways, so we don't go back from the mind of Christ to, you know, other ways of thinking. Amazing, hey? All right? So he's actually given us some guarantees here. He's given us the process and then the, the outcomes to do with present truth if we keep teaching it. Okay? So the process is in the first verses, right? 
Um, give all diligence to add to your faith, goodness. Add to your goodness, knowledge. Add to your knowledge, self-control. Add to self-control, perseverance. Add to perseverance, godliness. Add to godliness, brotherly kindness. And add to brotherly kindness, love. That's the process. All right? And so if this process is always going on and present truth is always being propagated, then three things are going to happen. All right? And that's what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. All right? So verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will not be barren. Did you get that? Yeah. You cannot be barren. <laughs> and yet how often over the years, you know, we've gone back to passages in the Old Testament that talk about barrenness, you know, and, and how to become fruitful. Well, guess what? In the New Covenant... I've come to see and believe that it actually works the opposite. It's not that we're barren and, and wanting to become fruitful. It's not that we're, we're, we're barren and needing to, you know, to, to have a miracle, you know, for, for something of life to come out of us. No, it's actually the opposite. Because as you know, you are in the Spirit. Boy, have I been talking a lot about that to a lot of people of late, you know. <laughs> because... I'm running across people who still say, come Holy Spirit. And of course, you know my response, well, where did he go? You know, and they look at me weird and I say, well, I'm serious. Where did he go? <laughs> he's inside you. Yeah. Because, you're, because he's in you, you're in him. Yeah. You can't say, come Holy Spirit, he already came. Yeah. <laughs> what an insult to say, you know, to suggest he left you. <laughs> And by the way, I have been that blunt with a couple of people. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and, and the thing is, we're, we're learning to have the mind of Christ because we're in the Spirit. Because we're in the Spirit, we can't think anything but like our King. So we learn how to think like Him. We learn how to have the mind of Christ because we're in the Spirit. All right? Yeah. So because of that, we can't be anything but fruitful. Yeah. We have to be. Yeah. How are you going? Am I messing with your heads? <laughs> Boy, I hope so. Because <laughs> it's true. Right? He's given us a process and he says, I'm going to keep giving you present truth. And even after I'm dead, it's going to keep coming, he says, right? <laughs> and so then if, if this stuff abounds in us, we cannot be barren. Yeah, yeah it's true, right? If, if, if we accept the truth of God's word, if we get a revelation of this and a conviction of it, it'll change your life. Because we all carry grace. And if we're aligned you know, accurately with the Father and with, uh, you know, with our apostolic fathers and so on, then we know grace flows, right? Apostolic grace flows, authority flows, there's, a, there's an overflow, a release, you know? And what does this mean? As, as well as the fact that I'm in the Spirit, you know, and I think like my King, therefore, because that's how the Holy Spirit's teaching me to think, yeah? So I can't be barren. Was, was Jesus barren? He couldn't be. Right? Well, we can't be. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is called present truth. <laughs> it's the opposite to what we were taught. It's the opposite to what the church system had us striving for or giving up on. <laughs> yeah? It is. And it's like, well, I, you know, I, I don't have the... You know, I can't play music, I can't sing, so therefore I can't do anything in the church, you know. Well, I suppose I could clean the toilets, but gee, you know. <laughs> Which is why mostly we hire buildings where we don't have to do that anymore. Because <laughs> someone else gets paid to do it. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying today? And I, I believe God wants this part of, the pre of present truth to not just be understood, but to become a conviction in our lives that 
we are in the Spirit. Yeah, we, The Holy Spirit is teaching us how to think like our King. We are developing the mind of Christ. And because He's in us, we cannot be barren. Because that is the opposite to who is in us. And it's not about some giftings in the context of our, our organised way of doing things. The fact is that 24-7 we have a life and most of that life is outside of this kind of setting, right? Yeah. yeah. And we, are, we actually are made, built to be fruitful. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Even if it's just how you treat your neighbour over the fence. Whatever. Whatever it is God puts on your heart to do. You know? Um, the fact is that none of us can be, can be unfruitful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you are in the spirit. You're not in the flesh. Yeah. All right. And so therefore, the Holy Spirit's always going to be fruitful because he's God. Jesus was always fruitful when he was here you know, in the flesh. And he's in us. So we're, we're, we are Christ in the flesh on the earth. Yeah? So we cannot be barren. We cannot be unfruitful. <laughs> How are you going? Yeah, it, it's a tilt thing, right? <laughs> Trying to get it, you know? But if, but if you get a revelation of this, it'll change your life. Because then we walk in grace... We're not striving. We're not trying to do anything. We understand that this is who we are in the new covenant. This is who we are because we're in the spirit. This is who we are because this is how the kingdom works. Nothing in the kingdom is unfruitful. Nothing. If it's unfruitful, it's not the kingdom. And what did Jesus do with the unfruitful tree? He cursed it and it died. So by the way, I would lay a hold of this message, right? Because I don't want to be cursed and dead. <laughs> just a little incentive there, you know, just thought it'd help out. <laughs> no, but seriously, when I got this revelation that I cannot be barren, boy, did it shift a whole bunch of stuff. I cannot be barren. My life will be fruitful. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, because this, this, this truth, like many, you know, many present truths, is the opposite to how we've been taught. So it messes with our heads for a bit. But if we'll receive the revelation, it becomes a conviction built into our hearts, then our whole life changes just over one concept of, in the kingdom. Our whole life changes. Because all of a sudden, our thinking is, where is the fruitfulness happening? Yeah? Where is my father at work? Where is the Holy Spirit directing me into being fruitful? Because my life is about fruitfulness, not about barrenness. Yeah? Awesome, hey? All right? And, um, and so, <laughs> so the, we'll neither be barren and neither will, be, will we be unfruitful. In other words, you can look outside there and, you know, everything's lush and green. You know, so that's not barren, but there's another step beyond lush and green, and that's fruitful. That's harvest. Yep. Yeah, and so we'll neither be barren, but also we'll neither be unfruitful. In other words, we 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 must be lush and green, full of life, not barren. But being full of life means we will produce harvest. We will produce outcomes, not because we're trying to, but because. That, that's what's built into us because of who's in us. Yeah? It's awesome, hey? Yep. And, and we don't have to try and make it happen. We see what the Father's doing and we're there because he wants to work with us. Yeah? We're not trying to do stuff for him. All right? We're working with him and he's working with us. Yeah? yeah. And so therefore, what's he going to do? He's going to produce harvest. <laughs> He's going to produce fruit. Yeah? You know, Naomi has a chili bush in her backyard. All right? 
and grows these long red chilies. Well, eventually, when she, when she got her first harvest, um, you know, dummy me was over there and they looked like they were long green chilies. They looked really good and I cut them off, you know. And uh, there's no bite at all because I'd, that was too early. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in the spirit that day. I wasn't being, <laughs> wasn't being really fruitful, you know. <laughs> but now we figured them out, right? And so, you know, there'll be about, what, a dozen or so? Yeah. And you wait until they all start getting red, you know. And, you know, and then there'll be like three or four and they're all really bright red and you cut them off and, you know, they're, they're not too hot and they're full of flavour, you know. And then by the time the last one's, you know, gone red and you can cut it off and use it, the next crop's almost, well, it's starting to come on. How many times now have you had it? That Three, four? Yeah, all right. Do you know that chilli bush does not know how to be barren? <laughs> and, and, and at least after I figured out when not to harvest, <laughs> it's now a very fruitful tree, <laughs> fruitful bush. Are you getting the point? And it seems like that bush can't do anything but produce fruit, which ripens, and then we harvest it, right? It, it just keeps doing it. This is us. Yeah. Yeah. So the system that we've come out of has actually taught us how to be barren sometimes. Yeah. Or at least to think we're barren. Yeah. Or if we are flourishing, that we can't actually produce fruit that works. All right. Maybe because Phil comes along with the scissors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but in the kingdom present truth tells us that we cannot be barren and we cannot be unfruitful isn't that awesome yeah all right so that's the first two and then the next one's in verse 10 if you do these things you'll never stumble oh how is that you will never stumble. Now, this is not pie-in-the-sky stuff. This is the Holy Spirit talking through the Apostle Peter. Yeah. Right? You will never stumble. <laughs> because if we're not barren, but we're flourishing, and if we're not unfruitful, but we've got a harvest happening, all right, then at the same time, we're never going to stumble. You see, in the area of our personal lives, it's not about temptation, you know, and all that kind of stuff, because we actually have dominion over sin, the Bible tells us. We rule over it. So therefore it cannot stumble us. Come on. Yeah? <laughs> and I still run into people, and a few weeks ago we were in a church that you know, where there's people talking about, oh, I repent every day, and, you know, and I'm like, come on. We're not called to repent every day. No. Because we're called to have a change of mind so that we think differently and we conduct ourselves differently like Christ. A new nature. A new nature, yeah. which has dominion over sin. Yeah. Yeah. We can never stumble. Wow. There would be some people who would call this heresy, but actually what the other thing is heresy. When we talk about the new covenant, when we talk about the kingdom. yeah. And the reason it's heresy is because this is not about us trying to be right with God every day. We are right with God. Yeah. Yeah. We have the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. And people use, give lip service to that, but they don't understand how to live it because they haven't received present truth. They don't know it. They haven't got established in it. To be established in present truth means we have revelation that, that means that we know that we know that we know that we're never going to stumble. Backsliding will never happen. Come on. Come on. All right? And yet, we, we were taught stuff like, you know, the unforgivable sin... You know, a real distorted view of that. 
you know, and you're out, baby, you're gone, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yet Peter says, if you do these things, the present true things, right, not only will you flourish and be a harvester, but you'll never stumble. So I don't know which so-called truth you want to lay a hold of. I know which truth I'm laying a hold of. The present truth. <laughs> the stuff that's present with us always, but not everybody adheres to it. Yeah. And we have whole church movements that have actually jettisoned it. Yeah. We do. Because the truth of God's word is that we have dominion over sin. We will never stumble if we do these things. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. We don't have to repent every day if our mindset is changing to become like our king's mindset. Because that's what repentance is. Yeah. And if our mindset is changing to become his mindset because we're in the spirit, right, then we have a guarantee. Come on, did you hear that word? We have a guarantee we'll never stumble. My goodness, I wish I knew this years and years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we read over this stuff and didn't get it, you know. But you know how, how to really nail this down? You know that we're going to flourish, not be barren. We're going to be harvesters, not, not unfruitful. And we'll never stumble, all right? Apart from the things I've already told you, in verse 10 it says, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. Now, we have to understand call and election, yeah. right? because that's been mistaught as well. Yes. And I'm not the greatest theologian in the world, and I'm not the authority on everything, but I have to tell you something. My research on this is just, um, uh, has just added to my freedom. Let's call it that. All right? Call, the, the Greek word for call, means an invitation. Yeah. An invitation. So we need to... Make, be sure about the invitation. What's God's invitation? Yeah. It's not just forgiveness of sin and a home in heaven. No. God's invitation is for us to enter into everything that his kingdom is about and to be true representatives of the king in the earth, to be like Christ's walking the earth. No. That's the invitation. Yep. Yeah? And Christ never stumbled. Christ was never barren. Christ was never unfruitful. And Christ is in us. <laughs> yeah? And so the invitation is to come into the fullness of the kingdom. This is not, not the invitation to salvation. Right? This, is, this is bigger than that. This is not the invitation to uh, a calling, you know. This, this is the invitation into the kingdom, into the, what present truth means, I, into the stuff that Peter's talking about here. You know? It's the invitation into a, a life that is the total opposite to the ways of the world because it's a life in the kingdom. Yeah? And by the way, it was an invitation into, into a, the spiritual kingdom of Christ, which was the opposite to, in many ways, the, the physical kingdom of Israel. The principle, you know, God used that as the picture of you know, what the, this kingdom would be like. But in reality, the people didn't have what we have. They couldn't say, I'm in the Spirit. <laughs> yeah? And so this is a contrary kingdom. It's contrary to the religious world. It's contrary to the, the business world, to the political arena, to all the systems and structures of our world. Uh, and it starts with, with how we walk it out. You know? But the promises, are, the, the process and the promises are here. Yeah? And, um, and so... We, we need to, to um, make our invitation sure. In other words, we need to accept it fully. You know? <laughs> that, that's, that's all right. That's just the Lord you know, confirming the word. No, no, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. So, so the calling is the invitation, but it's not the invitation to salvation. All right? It's the invitation into all that the kingdom's about. Yeah? 
Because as you've heard me talk about from time to time over the years, you know, I'm like Peter, hey, I just keep it coming, right? <laughs> we don't live in the doorway of the kingdom. Yeah. yeah? So the invitation is to explore every part of the kingdom. All, all of the, um, the victory of the kingdom, the, the more than conquering, the ruling over, you know, the dominion, all of that, you know, so that we never stumble and so that we're flourishing and fruitful. Amazing, hey? And then the second thing is make your election sure. Well, that word election has been just so abused over, over the decades, you know, in my lifetime and before, because this is not about some are elected and some aren't. It's not about that. The original Greek concept is make your selection sure. Okay? But that doesn't mean, it's not talking about, you know, the predestination thing where supposedly some are selected to come go to heaven and some aren't, you know, or some are selected to get saved and some aren't. No, Jesus died for all. Come on, he died for all. This is a different selection we're talking about here. If there's an invitation into the fullness of the kingdom, then we also need to be sure about what we're selected to do in the kingdom. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. You know, and some of you know my story and how that it took a, a lot of years of ministry, you know, and all sorts of stuff happened before I even understood what I was selected to be and do in the kingdom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's what he's talking about. What we're selected to be fruitful in. <laughs> it might simply be you're fruitful to run a, you know, a mum's group. Reach out to the young mums in the neighbourhood, whatever, you know. It might be that you, um, uh, there's a bunch of guys, you know, that you know who like to play golf, so you start a golf group, you know, and you, and you just build relationships until things open up. Who knows, you know? Yeah. Right now, Naomi and I are selected to actually infiltrate <laughs> the, 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 the business sector and, be, and, and the political sector, Right, of the Greater Kabulcha area, yeah, and um, so that's that. God selected that for us for now. This is what we're part of what we're to do in the kingdom, and we're to infiltrate. We're not doing any more than that. That's the season, and God's given us favour. And you know what? Just about every everywhere we go, another Christian influencer makes it known that they're a Christian. <laughs> they just keep coming out of the woodwork. All three federal politicians up there are Christians. A state politician actually wanted to have a coffee with, with Naomi and he's a spiritual believer. <laughs> at the last, last meeting, there was just about four or five of us left at the end you know, of the night and um, one of them was an another councillor, different division, and um, I find out that he actually used to be a school chaplain. And he still does an SU camp a year. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, so you're a Christian. <laughs> they just keep coming out. Mm -hmm. Naomi goes for a, to do an interview at the radio station. I think it's about five now, isn't it, or something? Yeah. But one of the early ones, the woman who was, you know, organising it with her when she arrived, Naomi's talking about what Chamber wants to do in the area. And this woman says, praise God. <laughs> you know, she's not supposed to say that in that workplace, you know, but <laughs> out it came. Right? Do you know, we're being fruitful without doing the stuff that everybody thinks you're supposed to do. Because we're doing what the Father wants us to do. We're doing what we're selected to do. Did you get that? Yeah. Now that might change at some point. But we have to actually walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, have the mind of Christ because the Holy Spirit's in us, we're in Him, yeah, all of the stuff. And he says here that if you make your invitation and selection sure, okay? So we're all invited into the fullness of the kingdom, yeah? Don't live in the doorway. You know the story, right? <laughs> 
At least head to the kitchen and open the fridge in the kingdom. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> but, you know, what an amazing passage of Scripture because he gives us a sequence of things, a process. All right? And then he says that on the basis of that, you can make your invitation and selection of who you are to be and, do, and what you're to do in the kingdom. You can, you can be sure of that. You can establish that. And you'll never stumble in that. <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah? This is why present truth is so powerful, but why it's so essential. Because what it does is it establishes us in the truth of the kingdom, not in the stuff that the, the, the church has drifted off into somewhere, largely, you know? And then when, when the Holy Spirit brings us back to this, this kind of stuff and begins to open it up for us so we see it and understand its outworking and how to walk in it, all right, then our mind's got to catch up sometimes. But, you know, the Holy Spirit helps us with our mindset because we're in Him, remember? We're in the Spirit. He, and we're led by the Spirit. Why? Because we're mature sons of God. Yeah? <laughs> so... So this is a given. We are led by the Spirit. We're not just in Him. We are led by Him. Mm. Do, do you want me to tell you some other truths? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which are opposite to what we were taught? I mean, this is the stuff, isn't it? But this is the stuff of the kingdom. And if we, if we continue to hear present truth, it'll grow in us. It'll become who we are. We'll have the mindset of Christ. And we will flourish we will be fruitful and we will never stumble. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on, let's stand and pray.